everyone. Welcome to SEO podcast by SEO Sly. I'm Olga Zar, your host. And today I have a very special guest with me. This is Nitin. Nitin, how are you doing? Hey, Olga, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I've been meaning to invite you for a long time and it's great that you are finally here. So for people who don't know you, can you like briefly introduce yourself? What are you up to? Where are you based? Like, mm -hmm. what do you do in SEO? Definitely. Yeah. So I'm Nathan. I live in Berlin, Germany, and uh, I'm running my own agency, which is called Botpresso. And uh, yeah, it's a complete remote team. We love tech SEO. We love breaking things. We love building things. We love basically growth. And about my background, so I started my professional journey back in 2012 as a software engineer. So I am an oh. engineer who turned SEO. Yeah, that's okay. That's me. Okay, cool, cool. So, so since we started talking about your past, I want you to take me like way back to the beginnings mm -hmm. and tell me more about how it all started. So 2012, right? Yes, that's so right. So this is more so, uh, more around when I when I started as well. Okay, so 2012, oh, what happened then? Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I, I, I'm a master's in computer applications. So when I completed my master's in 2012, I joined this company called Flipkart. And uh, so my role that, that time was software engineering. Uh, I don't know, like it was a software development engineer, right? So I joined them and, and they assigned me this team called SEO technology team. I had no idea what SEO was that time. I just knew the full form of, of that, to be honest. And there also I Googled to confirm whether it's search engine optimization or something else. So this is how it started. And uh, when I started working on it, I think that time I was feeling bad about it, that we did not have any SEO marketing manager. So I was like, from whom will I learn? From where would I know, you know what to work on? But my manager, uh, the engineering manager, he was really nice. And he gave me, you know, wings to fly. He was like, hey, you know, just go and research what needs to be done. And then you can run your own experiments and prove the value of it. So I kept on doing that. Right. And I think I, I uh, immediately started liking it because it's like, you know, you're walking in a dark tunnel. You don't know from where the light would come. Right. You're just checking every single, yeah. uh, you know, rock out there. So I, I started doing that. And some of those experiments worked. And they motivated me to do more of it. And then I started doing more and more of it. In fact, in those initial days, I had some crazy experiments planned as well. So at that time in 2012, even if you're doing something small, but meaningful, right? It used to show you the result immediately. So I wanted to run some uh, you know, crazy uh, experiments on our product pages. And Flipkart was a decently known brand by then. So I spoke with the manager. He was like, hey, you know, I'm a bit skeptical about that because you're talking about product pages, which bring a lot of business for us. I was like, but I'm confident about it. You know, how can I, you know, just go for it? And he was like, maybe you can think about, you know, how you can do this on a smaller set of pages, right? So I think that's how in 2012 itself, when I did not even have one year of, one year of experience, right? I was fresher in SEO space. I also started, uh, you know, to learn A-B testing in SEO. So I ran, ran some experiments there and uh, yeah, I think the results were amazing. And then he was like, okay, now I trust you. You can go ahead with whatever test you want, but make sure you're taking, you know, calculated risks and not bringing the whole website down. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where it started. And the good part was because I was thinking what to implement and I had the power to implement that as well, because I was a software engineer. So whatever I was thinking, I could code that. And even if, you know, I'm thinking about some A-B tests, right? I could write some ugly code to prove the value of it. And once it gets approved, I could just, you know, clean it up again and go for the major launch. So, yeah, I think that that journey was fantastic. Flipkart taught me a lot. Yeah, that, that sounds like a perfect start for an SEO and perfect background because it gives you like this power that a lot of SEOs are lacking. So for example, I, mm -hmm. I used to learn to code a bit, but I am not that as proficient as a coder is. And it keeps kind of haunting me that I should learn this. I'm still like planning on taking this Python course, this course, but mm -hmm. there's always so much, so much work to do that, that, that it keeps being <laughs> put off for later. But that sounds like, like as, as I said, like a perfect start. But uh, regarding those mm -hmm. experiments, because I believe that doing tests, doing experiments is like the most important part of being an SEO and the one that lets you learn the most. So 
Can you like tell me more about those the craziest ones? Like what exactly did mm -hmm. you do? What did you test? What the results were? I'm super, super interested to learn. Yeah, definitely. So I can talk about probably two, three experiments which are very close to my heart and they are still on the website. And one uh, one of them is like something which I feel embarrassed about now when I look at it, right? So if you go to Flipkart's homepage, well, they have probably 700 links on the homepage, right? I, I feel bad about it now, like 700 links, that's a lot, right? But at that time, what I did, I launched some pages, some brand pages, right? And I was like, you know, where to put them. So one thing I did was I put them in, in, in our breadcrumbs, right? So that they get a lot of internal mm -hmm. links, which was a pretty great success, right? We started ranking number two, number number three, and I was like, okay, well, from nowhere to number two, number three, which yeah. is great, right? But how can, uh, how can I go from here to number one? Because I'm always, you know, looking for the perfection. So I was like, how can I go to number one? So I was, of course, reading a lot of articles, a lot of case studies. And there was like, hey, you know, if you put something on the homepage, which is basically the most important page of the website, you basically get a lot of value from internal linking perspective. I was like, okay, but how can I put 20 pages on the homepage, right? So I just created a kind of footer uh, section where I put like, you know, top stores, top brands and so on. And I put all, I dump all of all these links there. And trust me, within one day, we started ranking number one for oh. almost all those keywords. It was like magical, nice. right? So this was, this was crazy. I was really happy about, right? And then Another one, which I'm, I think that is an experiment which basically kind of pushed me, kind of convinced me that SEO is the field for me. So here I'm talking about a problem which happened because of our category team, the way they basically created different categories, right? So we had Puma shoes on the website, but we have two different landing pages for that. So one was under men's shoes, men's footwear category. Another one was under women's footwear. So basically... If you are searching for Puma shoes, we have two pages for them, right? And now the question was, how do we basically treat this from an SEO perspective? If we keep, if we uh, put one page, uh, you know, under no index, and for example, open the other one, then what happens to someone who's searching? For example, if I'm searching for Puma shoes, landing on a woman's Puma shoes, right? And my intention was to buy Puma shoes for myself, right? Uh -huh. I would probably just bounce off. And similarly, if you are searching for something and you're landing on men's Puma shoes, you would say, hey, no, this is not what I was looking for. So probably Flipkart only has men's Puma shoes. You would not probably come back on the website again. So now this was the problem statement I had. And uh, so I spoke with category team. They said, it's a big change. It will take, you know, we will have to shake off everything, right? The whole Flipkart to get this fixed. So I was like, no, I don't have like forever just to fix this. So what I realized was if you go to Flipkart and search for Puma shoes, there, I was getting a combined page, this result page uh, the search result page. That was a combination of both the genders, and you could see everything there. And here, men and women were coming as filter, which was not the case when mm. I was checking the category page. I was like, that, that's interesting. So now, I was uh, like, uh, like those early days, right? I was even working on weekends. So I was like, okay, this weekend, I got a project, right? So I started working on that on Saturday morning. I was thinking about it, thinking about how to solve that. What I did was I took the result of that search page. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote a wrapper on top of that, which was basically overriding the value. For example, on the result page, first of all, it was no index page. So I changed that to index page for my special uh, pages. Let's call them filter pages. And uh, well, in Flipkart, whenever we, we were working on any projects, we were naming it first, a fancy name, and then we were working on that. But in this case, we did not give it any name, right? Because it was a hobby or weekend project for me. So I started working on them. And now what I did was I changed the URL slug. So it became slash Q because I was calling them query pages, right? So it was slash Q and then let's say Puma hyphen shoes. Simple, mm -hmm. right? Nothing, no confusion. Then I was overriding everything that we had on the surf page. And it was showing, showing results for in double quotes, Puma shoes. And you have so many results, right? I was like, I don't need this, right? I changed that completely and made it Puma shoes, right? And... Also, that was a normal text before I made it H1, right? And I basically, basic, uh, you know, made some changes like that. No content right now on the web, on the pages, just the products. I did this. I launched those pages, and in six hours, right, they started ranking in top five, all of them. So I launched, I think, fifteen or twenty of them. And when nice. I launched them, right, uh, so I think uh, when I then I went to my manager, I told him that, hey, look, this is what I did, and six, uh, we are ranking in top five for all of those queries. And I'm talking about queries which have like massive search volume. 
you can imagine right puma shoes yeah. reebok shoes adidas shoes they had massive search volume and we started ranking in top 5 for all of them so i was like i also want to name these pages now he was like dude you brought magic these are magic pages so i think we started calling them magic pages <laughs> and i'm so happy that those pages are still there and every now and then i go and check you know how those pages are performing in semrush because i don't have a google search console or analytics access for the property anymore but yeah it gives me so much uh, you know happiness seeing that those pages are still bringing thousands and thousands of sessions every single month nice nice and talking about footer links i wouldn't say this this was like so crazy like look at for example cnn they mm-hmm. what what they have in footer like they link basically to everything in footer and and from mm-hmm. what i know they are doing very well in terms of seo but that's mm-hmm. that, that sounds like very very cool very interesting results and uh, something about ab tests you you did back then can you share something like how did you do them did you do them like with google ads for example or mm-hmm. or like tell me about it no it was not google ads but purely seo and what i did so i was a uh, you know like engineer myself so what i wanted to do was let's say i'm running something on product pages right mm-hmm. so i was like how do i create uh, you know different categories and of course i mean i was not thinking about creating uh, you know like kind of equal categories or e- equal buckets here right so that is something which of course if i do it now i would do that but at that time i did not think about that i was like okay even if i'm you know running this test on a smaller bucket right and able to see there is some growth and in the other bucket there is no growth i okay. i would be able to conclude that so what i did was so in product we had a product id in the mm-hmm. code what i did was i took that id right i i checked for all the even numbers so all the ids which were ending at even number 0 2 4 6 8 right they were bucket a and the odd ones were bucket b right so i publish something only for bucket a so i was just checking in the code that hey you know if product id modulo to equals to equals to 0 which means it's a even page which is my test category right then i add this particular section on the page and for the other category i do not add that and when i did that mm-hmm. i could clearly see that you know my bucket a was moving you know like a normal pace but bucket b was sh- shooting oh. up i was like perfect nice nice okay and h- how long were you at, at this first position how many years yeah so uh flipkart when i joined uh the company i joined as an intern so i worked there for 6 months and then i joined full time and i worked there for roughly 2 years Uh-huh. And, and what that time next? so yeah so it it was like a very uh, fun story because i love flipkart i love all the flipsters i worked uh, you know during this time i got to know a lot of amazing people as well however when i joined flipkart it was just 15 engineers and in 2 years time the company grew to 500 engineers so i was like oh. okay that the company is massive now right and i wanted something which is like you know uh, more challenging coming to me every single day and that is something you know that's the reason why i thought of okay i need to move to another startup so yeah after flipkart i joined another startup it's called lime road it's an e-commerce space as well and uh, i joined uh, the company worked there and here my role was different in flipkart it was software engineer but i was part of seo team but in lime road i joined on a dual role which was seo head and senior software engineer oh. so i was the one who was thinking about seo and i was the one who was also building seo as a service so that was a fantastic experience and i think it was it was brilliant because i had all the power and i was thinking about micro services and everything around that okay so maybe you can share some wisdom on e-commerce seo because it looks like you you have a lot of experience any like special mm-hmm. tips best practices mistakes to avoid Yeah. Well, yes, I think uh Flipkart was also an e-commerce and uh-huh. then Lime Road, right? And then the next company I I joined asked me so there also I was working on an e-commerce product. I think one thing which is very common in uh when you talk about e-commerce is indexation, right? So in in indexation you can go really wrong when when it comes to over indexation of pages and also with under indexation. So you need to find the right uh mix there. For example, when I joined uh, Lime Road, we uh, we did our keyword research, right? We got to know there are there the massive searches for, for example, short black dresses. So we had a page for dresses, but we did not had any uh, had any page for short black dresses. 
However, we had filters there. So if you uh, go to uh, yeah. dresses page, you say, hey, I'm looking for short dresses, not long ones, right? And I'm looking for black color. So I had that page, that, you know, page with two filters, right? Which was uh, where I had a lot of dresses as well, a lot of products. So from supply side, we were good. And demand side, I could see that there are massive searches for that, but we did not have any page for that. And uh, when I uh, went on SERP, search for that, right? I could see like there were brands who, which were ranking for short black dresses, but the product, product like the websites, the products that they had, they were not amazing. So I was like, this is clear opportunity. And this is just one example. So I found like hundreds of such examples. I was like, okay, we, I, we need to solve that. And I knew how to solve that because I saw this Puma Shoes example at Flipkart, yeah. right here. I knew, you know, how to solve that. So what I did, so there I solved it differently, but it was the, a similar problem statement, right? So here, what I did was I created a new page type filter pages where you could define multiple filters, which would be used along with the category and you could launch a page. So I did that, mm -hmm. right, and uh, launched some pages. And again, same <laughs> magic happened. These pages, I think it took a bit more time here because of authority. Flipkart's authority is way more than that of Lime Roads, right? So it took us, I think, like somewhere around 45 days. And we started ranking in top three for all those keywords where topics, right, not keywords, right? <laughs> because there were like a lot of other related uh -huh. keywords as well, which were which started ranking. Right. So, yeah, we started ranking in top three for all of them and we started generating a lot of traffic. So that was, mm. you know, another like testimony on what I was learning at uh, Flipkart before. Yeah, cool, cool. Like for, for me, when it comes to e-commerce, usually what works the best is simply making sure all the title tags H1s are set to like the keywords that we want to rank and in, in, if, if this is a huge site very often it, it imme immediately brings brings nice results of course it depends but this is yeah. kind of my overall uh, um, insight uh, okay i completely agree on that i think we often uh, kind of overlook at all these you know tiny hygiene elements right but they are really powerful they tell search engine so even when i work with my clients right the number one thing we talk about is hygiene where we make sure that we are, you know, fixing the experience for search engine bot. So when they come on the website, they're like, okay, I know what this page is about. I have absolutely no confusion, right? So fixing that. So once you fix that, I think you can build a lot of other things on top of that and uh, bring the maximum impact. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So the next uh, company was uh, e-commerce as well. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. What was the next one? So next one, one was... Ask me, and that that was hyper local uh, website basically. So if you're standing here searching for pizza outlets near me, right? So it will basically tell you, you know, where the pizza outlets, where you can go, and ratings and everything around that. So, but uh, here I worked uh, for a couple of years again, and uh, I, I joined this company and worked and brought some great result on AskMe.com, and then you know I was promoted to group head of SEO. Oh. Where in this, we had a hyper-local grocery website as well. And we also had an e-commerce. So I was taking care of hyper-local grocery and hyper-local brand, which was Ask Me, right? And then I was also working on the e-commerce part. It was so much fun because here, again, I was first taking care of SEO for three different brands where, you know, target group was different and everything was very different. And I was also responsible for building microservices so a common, you know, microservices, which basically cater to three different businesses. So instead of, you know, writing services, which work for one business, now it, it was like a hub of microservices to uh -huh. help multiple businesses. So it was so much fun and it was very challenging at the same time because we're building something, you know, which can scale easily while working on multiple products. It was challenging, but yeah, I really enjoyed working on it. Uh-huh. And like... Can you tell me, Mike, more, more details about those microservices? Like, like how yeah. did it exactly work? Like, what exactly sure. the, the results were? Definitely. So microservices were uh, basically uh, written to make everything super simple and in control. So, for example, let's say we have three businesses, A, B, and C, right? Now, business A, when they are rendering a page, a category page, they are calling my service and saying, hey, this is the business name. This is the page we're talking about. Give me all the on-page data. And my service was mm -hmm. saying, okay, no problem. I have all the data with me. And it was basically collecting all the data and saying, hey, here you go. You know, this okay. should be the meta title for this. This should be the meta description. This should be the H1. And on this page, we also have content. And the content is structured like this. 
like you have H2 and paragraph, H3 paragraph and so on. Hmm. So this service was handling everything SEO related, uh, everything on page SEO related. And the good part was because I had total control, right? So I was running my own audit and whatever I needed, I was just putting in my database and yeah, just refreshing the cache and the content was online uh, as in published on the websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was super easy. I had all the power. I did not have to go to developers requesting that, hey, can you give me that, this, nothing. Because everything was in place. Whatever I make changes, uh, whatever I change at my end, right, it was reflecting on the website itself directly. Yeah, it's, a, it's an ideal situation for an SEO where, when, where he <laughs> has the power to actually implement things. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. And the next stop on your journey was? So yeah, after this, um, you know, spending like a few years in India working with startups. Now I wanted to learn international SEO and I wanted to run my experiments on a large scale. So oh. then I thought, okay, in the, uh, there are not like a lot of companies who are doing international SEO in India, right? Not, not a lot of international brands. So I was like, okay, I'll have to think about moving out of India. So then I got this opportunity to join Trivago in Dusseldorf, Germany, and I moved to Germany. So that was my, that's how, that's how you know, my SEO career overseas and began. And when, when was it? That was 2016, December. Uh-huh, okay, okay. Yeah. And tell me so, more about that international yes. SEO experience. Yes, so I joined uh, Trivago as product owner for SEO. And it was a different experience because working with startups, you know, when you are thinking and implementing yourself and you don't have to discuss with anything, you can do whatever you want to a company, which is massive, where whatever you want to do, you know, requires a lot of, you know, like sign off from a lot of different teams, stakeholders yeah. and so on. It was a different experience. For example, when I joined, I remember it was my one of the first weeks, right? And I was working on something like some content change in the footer of the homepage. So it was a very uh -huh. tiny one. So we changed the content. I was like, hey, you know, it's done. So let's go live with this. And the guy told me, hey, have you discussed with the senior product manager uh, on, you know, how we are going live with this? I was like, yeah, but it's a tiny one. So I went to him. I was like, hey, we are trying to go live with this. Do you see any concerns? He was like, yeah, fine. I mean, I don't have any concerns, but what percentage are we going live with? I was like, 100%. It's a tiny change. He was like, no. Well, in here, we whatever we uh, go live with, we never go live with 100%. We basically go live with some percentage to see, mm -hmm. you know, how users are perceiving, the, uh, perceiving that. And then only we think about expanding that and go to 100% gradually. I was like, okay, then what is the number? Uh, then he asked me like, okay, then what do you think? What shall we do? I was like, okay, we can go for 50%. He was like, no, 50% is too aggressive. I was like, okay, you give me 0.7% <laughs> he said. Oh, so. Uh, he was like, well, I think 0. 0.5, 0. 0.7. If you want to play aggressive, let's go 0. 0.7. I was like, aggressive? 0. 0.7, really? Oh. But yeah, I mean, that that was the culture we had because we wanted to make sure that nothing is basically, you know, perceived uh, in, a, in a negative sense by users. So we went live with 0. 0.7% and we, of course, uh, did not see any impact as expected. So from there, we increased to, I think, like 10, 11% and then to 25%. And after 25%, he was like, yeah, it's it's totally fine. If you want, we can go 100%. But if you want to go one step ahead and 50% and then 100, that's also fine. I was like, no, from here, let's go with 100%. And with the next test, I'll probably be more, you know, like, uh, I'll, I'll think about more granular improvements in terms of expansion. But yeah, for this one, let's go 100%. So yeah, this was my welcome uh -huh. in Trivago, where I learned enterprise SEO and how we should think about something which is impacting millions of users every single hour uh -huh. right and the journey was fantastic because i learned you know i was taking care of 55 markets there 69 domains and it was so much fun working with content team where we had people native speakers of different languages and i was working with product managers i was working with yeah technical SEOs. I, I was working with analysts i was working with qa and i was working with design team as well so i was basically working with everyone, like all the different departments, which would involve in an enterprise SEO, you know, journey. So it was so much fun and mm. very, very challenging at the same time, but I really enjoyed it. And I think another thing which I learned when I joined Trivago, that was like, I need to be patient because in startup world, you can be, okay, well, yeah. we, let's do that. Right. So we talk about something in the morning. We say, Hey, can we go live with this by the end of the today? That doesn't happen in enterprise SEO. 
there you say hey we have to work on it when can we go live and then we talk about okay well this quarter's plan is already uh, you know we we can't do anything it's already you know uh, froze so maybe we can talk about it in the next quarter and uh, we can work on discovery and then the quart- the quarter next to that we can think about implementation i was like what really like i'm talking about something today which is an opportunity today and we're talking about after three quarters but yeah yeah this is how it works in enterprises yeah yeah but yeah you need to have patience you need to think about user impact you need to think about seasonality when you can think about going live with something which can be massive in terms of impact right so yeah yeah i can totally relate to that because for a couple of years i worked w- with uh, different procter and gamble brands and basically mm-hmm. th- this was this this was the same like i had an idea but from my idea to implementation like it was a year or something and sometimes it it, it just it, it it wasn't even implemented or like 5% of what i really wanted mm-hmm. to do was implemented so i to- i totally understand this Okay, yeah. so the after enterprise SEO was? Yeah, so here uh, at, at Trivago itself, so after one year, they evaluated my performance and there was like internal round of kind of interviews where they were choosing for the next global head of SEO. And uh, yeah, so I also participate. I did not, I was not basically going for that, but one of my teammates was like, hey, you are doing everything that they've mentioned here. Why are you not even participating i was like no that will be a lot of stress right but he was like no you should actually go for it so i was like yeah i think even if it's a stress i think it it can be game changer for my career so i went for it there were six candidates in total and uh, yeah i was happy that you know it's happening because you know with this we'll have more power in seo team i was not even thinking whether i would be able to you know get that role but somehow they liked my pitch they liked my performance in the last year and when they asked me a lot of questions about you know what do you think about learning for the team what do you think about you know how we solve whatever issues we have at the moment how would you, how would you think about the projects how would you think about growth i think whatever answers i gave that time they liked it and they were like okay you are the one <laughs> so oh, nice. i i i i basically celebrated that moment and yeah i started working on uh, you know like the whole seo initiatives as global head of seo for trivago and now i was responsible completely for 55 markets 69 nobains and the whole you know like cross functional team that we had so it was it was great and very challenging and i think that time i realized you know what the pressure is right because i was responsible for everything so a lot of reporting a lot of you know communication a lot of stakeholder management so a lot of good good stuff so it was fun and yeah so now uh, the the one thing which was you know always kind of pinching me that was trivago was in dusseldorf which is a small city here in germany mm-hmm. right so i wanted to talk to people i wanted to discuss you know like what i'm working on what they're working on but they were it was a small city so we did not have any seo community there unfortunately mm. so but i heard like in Ber- uh, in berlin we have like a lot of seo communities regular uh, meetups and stuff i was like okay well i need to think about moving to berlin so that's exactly what happened i got like a few offers and uh, so i got i think i started looking out and within one and a half weeks i had five offer letters three of them were from berlin i was like okay there is something special about <laughs> berlin right so i chose one of them which was omeo that time it was known as go euro it was also my favorite uh, travel product i was starting my all travel planning there so i was like okay my favorite product and team also looks very fun to work with and they are they have a lot of challenges so why not you know just say to that say yes to that so yes then i moved to berlin joined this company as uh, their global head of seo this time the number of markets uh, you know dropped down to 28 but yeah it was still so much fun because we were solving a lot of crazy problems and it was comparatively startup we had only 300 uh, people that time and in trivago we had 1100 right uh-huh. so yeah moved here and i started working here it was so much fun worked a lot on automation and uh, yeah like programmatic seo content production at scale and all those technical seo projects the good part was tech team was pretty pretty solid here so uh, when i joined uh, i think at that time we had some friction but after that i remember 6 months later i was sitting with engineering manager and during the lunch hours and uh, we were discussing how we can solve internal linking and trust me like that lunch hour discussion brought the idea of graph theory 
uh, based internal legal solution, which was a super hit and which is still one of the projects I'm really proud of. So yeah, mm-hmm. I think that that journey was brilliant and discussions with engineering, how to solve something and we think out of the box. I learned that there. Yeah, cool. And any any interesting uh, interesting results from programmatic SEO? Any any examples? Oh Autom- yes, definitely. Automation. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So internal linking, which I was mentioning, so we use yeah. graph theory to solve the problem of internal linking because mm-hmm. here we were talking about the whole world, right? Yeah. You are in interval space, so you have, for example, you are looking for trains from Berlin to Paris. You're looking for flights from Berlin to Barcelona, right? There are different uh, mediums yeah. and we are talking about the whole world, right? So how do we basically fix the problem of internal linking? So we tried multiple approaches using, you know, rule-based uh, algorithm, right? Which we built internally. But yeah, every time we had some edge cases which were not covered. So we were like, uh-huh. okay, how do we think about it? So then we started thinking about graph theory because graph theory is meant to solve problem like, uh, problems like this. But we never heard about using graph theory for solving internal linking we were like okay we can be the first ones Mm -hmm. so we 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 started working on that we dry ran the algorithm that we were working on multiple times and every time we managed to improve because we had graph theory based solution and then we had some rules on top of that which were influencing how this graph theory based solution works so in the end Mm -hmm. we managed to uh, achieve great results so just to give you, you know, some numbers, because I know you love numbers, right? Yeah. So when we started working on that, so in the beginning, the very first algorithm we had, that was covering only 50% of the pages we had. And remaining 50% pages were orphan pages, which were not linked from anywhere on the website. So we started adding more and more rules, right? So from 50, we, we went to 60% and then to 65, then to 70, then to 75. But 75% was the highest coverage that we managed to achieve with the rule-based engine. Right. And now we were like, okay, we have to solve this. And when we implemented uh, graph theory, our goal was if we are able to achieve 90%, we will call it a success. And can you guess what, uh, what we managed to achieve? 99. Oh yes. Bingo. (laughs) So it was, it was 98% something in the beginning, uh, 98.6%. And then we made some tiny uh, tweaks here and there. We managed to achieve 99%. And the one person pages which we could not uh, you know reach through this algorithm so of course because i have this you know like hunger of perfection i was like okay i want to see the those one person pages so i looked at uh, you know the remaining set and those were like corporate pages and other pages which were not connected with the entities which we were talking about uh-huh. so we solved them differently right so yeah but in the end we basically managed to achieve 99.9% coverage which is nice. something I'm really, really proud of. Yeah. So your career looks like only successes, tons of successes. So such, such great results. But were there mm. any like flops? Any <laughs> yes. worse moments? Can them. you share something? Oh, yes. A lot of them. I think uh, this is the first time I think I'm talking about it, you know, on a, on a platform. <laughs> so a bit <laughs> embarrassed as well. But yeah, I think failures is something we should all celebrate because failures teach us a lot of things. So I'll tell you about the very uh, first, uh, you know, fuck up when, uh, when uh-huh. I was intern at uh, Flipkart and I was dead scared. I literally was sweating in like, you know, five degree temperature. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was intern, I was working on the email marketing platform there. And uh, so I had my production instance as well as staging instance, both of them open in two different tabs. So I was, uh, you know, running some MySQL queries and I wanted to delete something like a table on the staging instance, not on production. And I did not realize when I switched to production and I did uh, delete okay. from table okay. and oh my God, this was the database where we had all the users information. Oh, right. So I just pressed enter and I was like, okay, this is cool. And then I realized, oh, it's, it's production. And <laughs> yeah, by that time, everything was deleted already. So I literally started sweating like, oh my God, you know, our email marketing team will literally kill me today. (laughs) So, but then the good part was we had our uh, slave instances, like staging instances, right? They were almost in sync. They were not 100% Uh synced, but let's say 95% sync. So I somehow managed to take a dump from staging and put that on production. So, but yeah, we lost 5% of our user base because of this. So that was, you know, one... uh, one massive, you know, uh, I would say like 
mess I made in the past. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, I was really careful. I was always looking at, uh, you know, tabs, even though I'm not using them, like, okay, I need to keep an eye here. Right. Uh-huh. So that was like one b- big mistake. And then also second, uh, so this was engineering one, right? Not SEO. Now I'll also talk yeah. about an SEO. Okay. Up, right. So that was during my Trivago days. So we were working on these uh, theme based pages like Barcelona, beach hotels and so on. Trivago did not, did not have those pages, but there was massive opportunity, right? And we had uh, the supply as well. So yeah, I started working on that, assuming again, you know, I think that time I spent like three to four months at Trivago. So it was not like I was not, you know, kind mm-hmm. of oiled enterprise SEO ex- uh, professional. So yeah, started working on that. And I was like, okay, this is what we need to build. And I est- I sat with engineering team, design team and everyone, and we estimated, okay, it would take roughly two to three months time. In two months, we should be able to do everything, but maximum three months. But then we were dependent on data team as well. And we assumed, especially me, I assumed that, you know, we will be able to get data. It should be rather straightforward, but that was a mistake. So when we started uh-huh. working on that team was working on, you know, building the, the pages and everything and all the services we needed. I went to data team. I was like, Hey, I need this. And they was, they were like, Hey, this is a bit complicated. Uh, let's schedule a call next week because this week is packed for us. I was like, just for one discussion, you're giving me like one me- week. And they were like, yes. And later part of the next week, I was like, okay, that makes it like one and a half weeks. Right. Oh. So I scheduled that call and uh, discussed, you know, what I was looking for. And they were like, Hey, look, uh, we are packed for next one month. So we can work on it, but it would take some time and we will only be able to pick it after one month. Oh. I was like, shit, I have no solution here. So yeah, got blocked for one month. And after that, they picked and they said, only when we basically pick it, we will be able to give you some estimates. I was like, okay, I do not have any other option, right? So I waited for one month and then they got back to me. They said, hey, our project that we were working on is delaying a bit. So you'll have to wait for another uh, two weeks. I was like, shit. Oh. So, yeah, I think it was like after one and a half, we spoke and they said, uh, we can do this, but it will take one month's time because we can only allow a lot one uh, resource on this and it will take one month's time. I was like, okay, well, again, I don't have any option. But now the frustration was developers who were working on it, they were expecting that we will go live with these pages in two months time. And now I'm talking about two and a half months before I get the data. Right. And after that, we could work on, you know, everything back end. Uh-huh. So, yeah, there, there was a lot of back and forth, basically, with different teams. And, uh, yeah, the whole project, which was supposed to go 100% as we expected in two to three months time, went live after six months with oh. so many compromises, with so many compromises. Important to note here, right? Because when we, when we got data, they said, well, out of these five uh, requirements, we can all only get you data for three pointers. For two, it's not possible. And we will have to make a lot of changes, which is more time consuming. So this is all we can do for now. So we went live with those pages after six months and it was half cooked. So of course, like it did not perform as expected, right? And realizing that, you know, one of your projects, one of your planned projects failed badly after spending six months on that, it really hurts. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And... uh... Talking about your journey, you were in in Berlin and what was the next Mm -hmm. step? Was it Botpresso? Yes, exactly. So uh, I always wanted to start my own brand because I love consultancy. And because when you are a consultant, you don't have to go through with what I went through when I was at Trivago, right? Talking to a lot of people and educating them about why we need this. Consultancy is having more fun where you can talk about what is needed and there are people who will figure out how to get that. Right. So you focus on totally. what matters from Visio and business perspective. I used to love this from, uh, you know, day one of my consulting, because along with Trivago, I was helping a friend as well. So I used to love that, you know, like how important your views are when you're a consultant. So then COVID happened. Right. And the whole company was basically on full or which is Kurzer Byte. Basically, they were on reduced capacity. So mm-hmm. I was like, this is my time, right? I can either, you know, spend time on Netflix or I can or... do something which I love. So I started building Botpresso and the initial result was great. And I was really happy that, you know, I took that, uh, I made that decision, right? And since then, I'm, I'm just focusing more and more on Botpresso. And yeah, so Botpresso, when I started, I started as an independent consultant because I was thinking about, hey, you know, I can just uh, sit on a nice beach where my kids are playing around, 
and I can work, you know, like four hours a day. That would be so cool, right? And it, it started like that, but very soon I realized there is massive demand. And if I'm working just, you know, by myself, then I can also become a blocker because if, you know, there is a, an important release at the same time I've planned something, right? So what will happen then, right? I cannot say no to a client who is trusting me, right? And I cannot say no to my wife who is also trusting me yeah. for making these plans, right? So I needed to uh, basically find a good uh, balance there. And uh, yeah, so then I decided to hire my first full-timer and he was, he, he still is uh, with the company and he's a fantastic guy, right? So he gave me confidence that I should be thinking about hiring more people and building a team around so that we can together solve this problem. We can together solve, uh, you know, a lot of things and we can together have a lot of fun as well. I think during my time at Trivago, I also learned about respecting every individual. I also learned about you know, how important the life is, not just work, but personal life as well, and how we should think about balancing, how we should think about, you know, being the best employer as well. So mm-hmm. Trivago is great at that. So and- when I started Botpresso, my goal was that I want to build something which everyone looks at, uh, you know, as the best employer or best company ever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think trying to build that, it's just two years, uh, you know, since we started not even two years when I had my first full timer, that was November 2021. So I think one and a half year, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying my best to build something where everyone is motivated, happy. We are celebrating. We are, you know, like treating each other with respect, like a family member. We are discussing not just professional, but also personal things. Yeah. So loving it so much. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So SEO Slide was also like a pandemic project. I also like started it in 2020. But it took mm-hmm. me two years to go like fully on my own. So it was like last mm-hmm. year in like November 2022 when I decided to yeah. give up all the jobs and become like an independent SEO consultant. But in mm-hmm. your case, how many people are there now in your team? Yes, the team has grown up to 16 oh. uh, people now. Yes. Nice. And uh, this is a remote team, right? This is a completely remote team, yes. Okay, so where are those people based? So I am based out of uh, Berlin, Germany, and mm-hmm. I have a teammate who is in France. So he is the nearest to me when it comes to, you know, like physical sense, difference. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, and then I have uh, one uh, intern who recently joined. She's based out of Abu Dhabi, right? And then the rest of my team is in India. Uh huh. Okay, okay. And can you tell me more about like exactly the types of services you offer? Like walk Mm -hmm. me through your offer. Definitely. Yeah. So we love enterprise SEO. We also uh, like the, when I'm saying we now, because the whole team is basically, we are learning from each other and challenging each other every single day. So together, I think we are pretty good at enterprise SEO. We are great at international SEO as well. So we are working with some really, big international brands and helping them, you know, grow their organic visibility globally, which is brilliant, right? Because I think that is something which I love as well, personally. And now the team has also started loving it. And it doesn't mean that we, uh, you know, do not understand startup SEO. We still understand those those uh, challenges, right? But I think working with enterprise and showing the bigger impact where, you know, whatever you do. And for example, end of the month, you say, hey, this month you got 5 million dollars plus from se only i think that is something which is a different level of happiness altogether <laughs> so yeah this is uh, what we do and uh, for me personally travel seo is uh, something that i love and e-commerce as well because of my background but yeah we love solving problems at scale and therefore enterprise seo is something which we really love yeah cool cool and uh, tell me more about this you being like the best employer what what is it that you do differently do you have like four day week or something like that <laughs> no 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 we, we we actually like uh like i think there there are a lot of things i'm working on right but of course it's a new company so i'm not over committing yeah, i'm not totally. saying that hey we will only work let's say three or four days a week right i'm not committing that right because i think we have a lot of work and I think the biggest challenge anyway we have is hiring. We are always like every single month we talk about, hey, we need to hire more people. Even I think if you go to our uh, hiring page, right, we say there as well that we are always hiring for the exceptional mm-hmm. talent, right? That's because we are always in need of more bandwidth. There are more and more projects coming our way and we 
often say no to 90% of them because we don't have bandwidth, right? And yes, about what I'm doing to, uh, you know, make it the place where people love, they learn, they enjoy each other's company and they grow at the same time. So for that, I think tiny bit of policies, for example, uh, let's say it's uh, so yeah, in India, I think uh, we are very connected to our parents as well, right? So I the one of the first policies that I announced was if it's your mom's birthday or your dad's birthday, right? You don't have to say them that, hey, you know, we go for dinner after my work day is done. So that leave is on me. You can, you know, oh. go out, spend the whole day with them, right? And that, that leave is on me. It, it won't be counted as your, you know, like nice. the leave that you get. So very tiny thing, but I really, uh, you know, like I'm really connected to my parents as well. I really know the meaning of parents because I'm myself father of two beautiful hmm. daughters, right? So I understand, you know, what parents do for us and how, if we do something for them, they feel great about it. So that's that's one. And uh, then we also started with our uh, annual offsite. So we had our first one last year, not last year, this year, in fact. Yeah, this mm-hmm. year in February. So when I was in India, we uh, booked a beautiful resort in uh, a city called Lonavla, which is very near to Mumbai. And uh, yeah, everyone was there for two nights and we had a great time. We did not talk about work at all. We were just talking about who is what, what you do and your personal interest we played some games there it was so much fun and awesome. then i think yeah and and this year we also hired our first hr and she's also working on uh you know, like policies and she's also working on regular monthly virtual events so that we can play together we can celebrate together and we also have uh for example uh people from different religions right so for example last week was eid and there were people in my team who were celebrating that as well. They do that, right? And now next week, oh, this week itself, the next week started today. Yeah. <laughs> so this week we are, we are celebrating Eid together. I think I'm really looking forward to that because I never celebrated Eid, right? I mm-hmm. just celebrated probably with some friends. But yeah, this time I'm celib- uh, looking forward to celebrating with my teammates and learning more about how do they do that. And yes, so it's it's basically about celebrating different festivals together, spending cool. time in person once a year to begin with, and probably we increase that further. And one more thing, which I think is something, uh, I think I'm I'm doing different. I'm not sure if everyone does that, which is so we, uh, you know, like last uh, year in December, I also announced, let's say, not employee of the year because I think for me everyone is fantastic, right? But I would say like someone who was bit different who basically contributed probably in you know through more channels as well maybe publishing posts and doing taking more initiatives so i announced this uh, em- employee and uh, what he would get is not like some monetary value in something but he would get a all sponsored trip to brighton seo right because oh. i think it's everyone's dream who's uh there like you know flying to brighton and meeting amazing people like yourself, right? Mm-hmm, and, yeah. Yeah, uh, and this is just a moment, but people. we managed to meet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, I think that was basically the goal. So the guy is uh, joining me next year in April, and this mm-hmm. year also we will announce, you know, like another person's name. So I think next year Botpresso is coming with at least three people there at Brighton SEO. So yeah, yeah, I hope this time I'll schedule a better time with you and we will yeah. go for a lunch or something. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. That's my hope too. So yeah. so basically your role now at Botpresso is like like a boss CEO, right? Or do you also mm-hmm. do work, actual SEO work, SEO tests? Do you still do this? Yes, I definitely do that. And I love doing that. Oh, and I think I can't imagine, you know, if I'm not involved in any SEO yeah. stuff. And I'm just doing this, you know, like uh, operational stuff, right? Just to enable others. I think I don't find fun in that. I love SEO. In fact, to be honest, like everything operational, which is, you know, managing a company, processing invoices, following up with people. I think I do not, I do not enjoy that. What I enjoy Uh is all those SEO conversations. So I try to keep myself involved as much as I can. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working on that. And we have our internal setup as well, where on a weekly basis, we have a meeting where we discuss about the problems people are facing. So in that one hour, mm-hmm. we basically discuss about the problems and everyone basically gives their views. We also have, for example, uh, we call it SEO Bytes, where uh, that's a learning session on a weekly basis, where 
every week we decide on a topic and we discuss, you know, what uh, on that particular topic. So someone from the team would say, hey, I'll lead the call because I'm more comfortable in this topic. Oh. And then we learn from that person. We share our opinion. So every week, basically, we talk about one topic. And then once a month in these sessions, we also invite external speakers, right? Where mm -hmm. like if you are, for example, expert of technical SEO and we think we can learn a lot from you, right? We request you. And yeah, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have joined us for that. And yeah, the, the experience so far is brilliant. For example, well, we are in July already, right? So yeah. we have already said uh, goodbye to Google Analytics Universal and welcome GA4, unfortunately, right? Yeah. But we had we had an amazing speaker who is master of GA4 and he joined us last month. So he gave a session about, you know, how we should be thinking about GA4 and how GA4 is awesome, which is, I think, something that you have not heard so far that GA4 is awesome, right? But he told <laughs> us like why GA4 is awesome and how we can make the best of it. So we also published an article on this because now we are convinced that GA4 is pretty good, right? So we should not be unhappy about it. We should rather be thinking about how we can adapt it and make the most of it. Yeah, totally. We, we cannot do anything about the fact that it's now here, only only this. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Nitin. So uh, where can people find you? What's the best place to follow you? Yeah, if you uh, just search for my, my name on Google, you would find all my profiles. I'm very uh -huh. SEO friendly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I, I, oh. I preferred uh, to be communicated on Twitter or LinkedIn. So you can catch me there. I'm a very approachable and friendly person. More than happy to talk. <laughs> what about Blue Sky? Are you there? No, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just won an invite. So probably I will set, a, set, a, set an account there. But yeah will be hard to manage yet another one <laughs> yeah that's true that's true yeah you can check it out and if you're convinced if you find it useful let me know as well i'll also give it a try okay okay cool so nitin thank you so much for for spending time with me for sharing your very successful very inspiring seo story it was really cool thank you alga thank you so much for having me it was really a pleasure speaking with you and also talking about some of my fuck ups for the first time ever. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> those are important. I think that's something that I want to tell uh, everyone that we should be thinking about fuck ups. We should be talking about yeah. our fuck ups publicly more often and so that people can learn from them and they can, you know, be better at what they're doing. Yeah, be aware that everyone has them from time to, from time. To time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yes. Okay, so thank you and thanks everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye.